tuntunut ringemään niin. Hei, hei Otto. Sänderen räkkron kantlaks, nähdä rokel tapteen. Ja kun me fyra sen snöinat. Snöskuttuna brytsen, plåg bilan går ut. So here is the car now, completely done. I have driven one week now after the MOT inspection and I haven't done anything to it. It has just worked fine. You haven't seen anything since I drove it out for the first time, but I had just installed the front fenders and lights and everything, just plug and play, nothing special to see. And I also installed some extra lights in the front because it's very dark here in the winter time, only a couple of sun hours a day so you need to have some good lights but let's check it out how it looks now well the interior is kind of stock only the steering wheel and the shifter knob is something special I only use these original seats now when I use it as a daily car I have some bucket seats which I will install for the summer if I will go to some track days and something like that so it's not so really special and the outside is just completely as it was when I bought it only the on the other side the door and and the fender is a bit ugly but like I said I will repaint the whole car later engine bay looks all good now after a week no leaks or anything works just fine and I don't actually know how long I have driven with it but I had to refuel for the first time today and I have driven a whole week now maybe seven eight hundred kilometers I think so if if you don't use the power so much it doesn't take so much much diesel so it's good for a daily with the diesel make and pump because you can turn it down just like a stock car if you want so that's that's a very good good thing with these diesel make and pumps I will show you how much money I have spent a lot of people have asked what all these parts cost so I have made a list which I'm going to show you now well some of you guys have asked what sort of stuff I have here in my garage so that is my next project and that is a bit, a bit, little bit longer. I will try to make gasoline turbo. I have never done that before. So I think I will use the Mercedes M104 engine and uh, use the BMW six speed gearbox and the BMW diff and I will make roll cage but it will be a longer project so I don't think I will make some movies about that maybe some short clips but it will be many years of building on that one and uh, here is my snowmobile Polaris Rush 2010 we are going to Ruka this weekend to drive a bit there is not so much snow here yet but Hopefully there is a little bit more. Yes. <laughs> and some mopeds. That is my first Honda Monkey. Almost everything that can be changed is changed on it. <laughs> Custom built engine. I drove it when I was in the moped age between 15 and 17. 15 to 24. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there is a project. It's a Rotman's monkey that I will restore sometime. And my first ever motorized vehicle, Suzuki Noppeli LT50. 
and the same helmet I had when I drove it. Does it fit? Yes. <laughs> and the last, a uh, full original Honda Monkey, which I built from parts I had in the garage. Just a funny, fun summer moped. And here is just some, some parts I have laying around. Of course, what in there. Uh, and these I haven't showed you. It's the summer wheels for the winter beta. From Guptuning in Estonia. They have very good prices on these replica wheels. And this, it's very good quality also. Good stuff. So, on the <laughs> these are the bucket seats. I will install for summer. Got some cheap used ones in good condition. So I will install those in. I also have some six point belts. Maybe I put those also, I will see. So this is the the first super turbo I built. This car started all my super turbo hobbies. That's been my summer drive in four years now. It also has the 605 turbo engine and a Sportline Caro interior with some bucket seats in the front and a very sexy three spoke white <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> Two seated rear seat from Cosworth Sportline. Really nice to drive around in the summer. Summertime! Completely unopened 605 turbo engine. Almost 700,000 kilometers driven. Works like a charm. Fucking mint. <laughs> this is my last year's project. It's a Mazda MX-5 Miata, which I bought. It was in very bad condition. It has had been in an accident and uh, all the paint was started to getting loose from it. So uh, it got a full repaint and these fender flares and bumper lip and all, all kinds of goodies. Completely stock, stock engine, 1.6, 16 valve, nothing. Nothing specially done, just painted the engine bay black. So this is a nice summer car, which I'm probably going to sell. And I also made the interior, and I made the door cards myself also, black leather. I think they have watched too much, too fast, too furious, <laughs> the ones who had it before me. It was blue. Blue interior with chrome details. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Steadiest fucking GoPro mount in history. to make a list of almost all the parts I have bought for the car 
and uh, there is maybe something missing and if you come to think about something just ask in the comments and I will try to answer. The prices are a bit tricky to get right because some of them I had from before and I don't actually remember that the real price but I tried to make some kind of list here. And to start with the project car, the 190, it costed me 500 euro and uh, it was without the rear door and some three pieces. But it was running, it wasn't not passed at the moment, but it was drivable. And then I got the engine donor car, also for 500 euros, but I have bought five or six of them before and they cost between 500 and 1200 euros, so about 800 is a good price for engine donor car. And the pressure plate, I always buy a new one but in this project I used a uh, used one but the the new price for a Sox 765 is 300 euros and the Eagle Clutches flywheel is 250 and uh, I used a uh, old used turbocharger whole set HX35 and uh, you can get new whole sets for about 500 depending on which model you want but they cost between 100 to 400 in used condition depending on in which condition they are <coughs> and the bushing set from Strongplex is 420 which is shipping to Finland and all the small parts like brake, discs, pads, uh, all the wires and uh, all the joints and different stuff, hardware, spray paint, everything small parts is about 2000 euros. I don't know actually what I have used I just expected that it should be around 2000 with all the small stuff and the tuning lights the front blinkers and the fender blinkers and the rear lights was 120 and uh, <coughs> the boost pipe set uh, you can get them from from all sorts of places I had most of them lying at home so I thought 200 would be a reliable price and uh, the air filter, the comb filter is about 50 euros with shipping the billet drive shafts are 380 euros without shipping and uh, a diesel making pump if you send your own pump to be rebuilt with new elements it is around 1000 euros with shipping. I have got it just a couple of euros under a thousand when I sent my own pump there. And if you buy a pump from them, if they have pumps in stock, they are 1200 euros, I think. And uh, the CV joints for the billet drive shafts I recommend that you get the whole rear subframe from a W210 model so you take the CV joints and the hubs from that one and the whole rear subframe you can get one for, for about 100 euros that is a good price and then the W124 rear spindles is about 50 euros a pair 
I have sold them for that. I think that's a good price. And then the ASD differential. It's very much depending on which condition they are, what ratio they have, and who is selling them, and everything. But I have seen them between 100 to up to 5 or 600 euros. But I think a good price for a used ASD differential is about 300 euros in good condition. <coughs> and then all the sandblasting and painting of the suspension parts uh, is about 200 euros depending on who does it and in which quality. And then the clutch plate, Tenaki clutch plate, I think it was 120 euros, I'm not really sure actually. And the intercooler is about 120. And uh, the total of all these parts is 7410. And there is probably something missing that I didn't remember, but I tried to remember the most that you need. Like I said, I have had many parts laying in my garage, so it's hard to remember what what parts I really used and what they cost. And uh, you can also, I recommend that you buy a whole car for engine donor because you can sell a lot of parts from them. I have sold from the engine donor, I have sold the gearbox, the shifter, uh, the stock turbocharger and all the boost pipes and the vacuum pump and the drive shafts. And from the project car I sold the original diff, uh, the engine and gearbox and the drive shaft. And for all those parts I've got 500 euros, so it's good to have some something laying so we can sell and get some money back. And this project took me 10 weeks to build, 10 weeks, 10 episodes, and uh, I haven't counted the hours exactly, but I think it's about 250 hours in the garage. So that should be it. And some stuff to think about when you start building a diesel Mercedes. So always use or you should use always a stock turbo engine, original turbo engine because the naturally aspirated has very weak connecting rods especially the 604, 605 and 606 naturally aspirated engines has very weak connecting rods and they break already at maybe one bar of boost so go for the turbo engine to be sure that they can take the power and before you buy anything else for your project, start with the diesel pump, the diesel make and pump. Because if you start building the <coughs> exhaust manifold and all the boost pipes and buy a turbo and everything, there won't happen anything before you have the diesel pump. So always start with the diesel pump first and then start building the everything around. And uh, also the, 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 the propeller shaft, this hardy box, always use at least 100 millimeter bolt pattern because the smaller ones break all the time and they won't take any power at all. So go for the bigger ones. And the bushings 
are a very good place to start with when you start building the car because if you don't have the bushing in condition then everything will make the car wobble and a lot of loose things in the drive drive shafts and everything so the drive shaft will break more often if you don't have the bushings in good condition <coughs> and there is maybe or there is a lot that I have forgot to say now but if you come up with something just ask in the comments and I will try to answer and it has been very fun to do this video series I have never done any YouTube stuff before and uh, I'm not the best guy to speak in front of a camera either like you have seen but I am trying my best and I would like to do more of this in the future but I will take a break now and build some other projects that are not so interesting to follow on YouTube but a very big thanks to you guys that you have watched and subscribed and hopefully in some future we will see you again Rust a bag of dope and wrote myself a letter Saying I gotta get it, get it before I'm deader Blood couldn't trickle any thicker, return redder Wouldn't write another riddle or even one letter Till I finish this